Hi everyone, it's Quickie Baby and welcome back to World of Tanks and in today's video I'm going to make the fastest possible heavy tank in the game and see if it is actually any good. So let's use Tanks GG to reiterate what are the fastest heavy tanks in the game. Top speed, obviously very important if you want to go quickly, right? And the AMX 50B and AMX 5120 are the fastest heavy tanks with regards to that. 65 kilometers an hour forwards. But then you have three vehicles, the Kranvang, the 260, and the IS-7 that are all limited at pretty much 60 kilometers an hour. But of course, top speed doesn't mean anything if you don't have the power to weight ratio to be able to back it up. Because you could have... 100 kilometers an hour top speed limit, but if you've got the power to weight ratio of a mouse, you're never going to be able to achieve it unless you're going downhill for a very long period of time. So vehicles like the FCM 50T, Concept 1B, Chrysler, and the Lorraine 50T, which looks to be a future possible reward heavy tank, all have great power to weight ratios, but their top speed limits are vastly more limited. So it comes down to the Object 260 and the AMX 50B to see who will truly be the fastest heavy tank. Now, this is where it's interesting because the 260 by default will actually go slightly faster on hard terrain than the AMX 50B. But because of the improved ground resistances the AMX 50B have on medium and soft terrain, it is the faster vehicle there. But remember, because the Object 260 is limited to 60 kilometers an hour, if we make any improvements to the tank, like using a Bond turbo, for example, or using Lend-Lease oil to be able to improve its engine power, it is still limited to 66. Whereas with the AMX 50B, if you put a Bond turbo on there and you use 105 octane gasoline, yeah, I think we have our winner. So, like an absolute mad lad, I have fully maxed out the AMX 50B. I have myself a Bond compressor on this vehicle. We got ourselves bounty vents, which will improve our cruise skill, which will affect our ground resistances. We're using 105 octane gasoline, which increases the engine power of the tank by 10%. And we're also using a new directive called fuel filter replacement, which increases our engine power by 4% as well. All of these things add up to a top speed limit of 71 kilometers an hour forwards and a power to weight ratio of over 24 horsepower per ton. But because I didn't really want this to just be a meme and you can't really not use a med kit in World of Tanks, I decided to f equip a heavy spall liner on the vehicle as well to protect my crew from injuries by 60% freeing up that consumable slot while also posing the interesting idea of taking significantly reduced ramming damage. Let's see what it's all about. All right, so we're spawning on Corellia and just look how quickly this vehicle is able to turn. The Amex 50B's traverse speed becomes absolutely outrageous because one of the things that a lot of people don't consider is that engine power doesn't only affect your ability to be able to accelerate your tank, it also affects your traverse speed. Think about when you've had stock vehicles that you've played with stock engines. Remember how slow they are at being able to turn before you're able to get the, the top engine on the vehicle? It really hampers your ability to be able to be mobile inside the game. And just look at this. We're up to 67 kilometers an hour. We're overtaking a Skoda T50. And we've got into position before the medium tanks have been able to set up to truly be able to punish us. And look at this light tank here, T-54 lightweight. Oh, no problem, I'm the AMX 50B. Not, not really lightweight right now. We're gonna come around the corner, and of course, even when you set your vehicle up for this kind of ludicrous speed, you don't make your combat capacity that much worse. Looks like we locked the guy's turret in there, and they're unable to get more than one shot into us, and yeah, looks like I'm the light tank now, right? How insanely fast is the AMX 50B set up like this? Able to get on this I'd say it's more medium terrain, up near that 71 kilometer an hour top speed limit. And to have that kind of combat capacity as well, considering that you can't use a gun rammer on a tank like this, the only thing that you're losing is your gun handling. Now don't get me wrong, gun handling is important on an autoloader. As you can see we miss a shell there on the Kunzerpanzer, maybe if I was using vertical stabilizers I wouldn't have missed that shot. And maybe I would have been able to... Aim a little bit better there as he goes around the corner because I wouldn't be so worried about moving my tank and blooming out my reticle. But still, you get about at least 80 or 90% of the combat capacity that you would do if you were to use vertical stabilizers on a tank like this. Because the ground, the, sorry, the, the dispersion values on this vehicle, they're not horrific on something like a T57 Heavy, for example. 
But to be able to have that extra speed, and this is what's always interesting for me. A vehicle in close quarters combat without vertical stabilizers is pretty much going to be just as good as one without, more or less. It only truly matters at a decent distance or if you're wanting to be able to move at a medium distance and be able to engage your opponents. But a vehicle that doesn't have the mobility is completely limited with the kinds of plays they can pull off. And that's why being able to go faster in World of Tanks can have truly outrageous um, should we say, it can have a truly outrageous change on your ability to be impactful in the battle. When your vehicle can go at 60, 70 kilometers an hour, when it can turn ridiculously quickly, when it can go backwards, I believe my vehicle can go backwards at 24 kilometers an hour, the possibilities for you to be able to outmaneuver your opponents in those close quarters situations, but more importantly as well, to be able to make big, wide flanking plays are truly spectacular. And so, the Amex 50B. Do I want to just sit up on this hill right now? Do I want to just make my piece up here and just spend the rest of the 11 minutes that we have on Corellia just sniping it out? No, why don't we try and maneuver across the map a bit like a medium tank, a faster medium tank would, or even something like a, a light tank might be able to. But unlike the light tanks, or you have a big auto loader to be able to go with it. And unlike some of the medium tanks, you still have, I'd say, a kind of a better auto loader than most tanks. To have a two and a half second intraclip reload is similar to a Progetto, but you don't have to uh, deal with the poor damage per minute that the Progetto has. Unlike a T57 Heavy that has a kind of better gun than the Amex 50 in close quarters combat, this vehicle is going to be the better sniping tank. There's one thing that this vehicle does have an advantage of over the medium tank competitors, and that is that it has those 300 extra hit points, and it also is a heavy vehicle. Now, there's one thing that I would really worry about when I'm trying to play a faster heavy tank like this, and that is that the vehicle's their camera rating is horrendous. And so what you're going to see me doing is always try and be about 445 meters away from my opponents when I'm engaging them. And you'll see that I was only about 413 away from the T T uh, Type 4 Heavy. And you can see now we're 455 meters. Now remember, the maximum spotting distance in World of Tanks is 445. So even if this Type 4 Heavy had 600 meters view range, of course he isn't going to have that much, he's not going to be able to see me. Unfortunately for me, I am loading the gold right now to be able to get rid of this Type 4 Heavy, but that's where the Amex 50B is actually really strong. 325 millimeters of APCR penetration. This really does have that kind of old school APCR high pen rounds from back in the day, as this was the first autoloader. It's so weird that I'm playing this tank now, such the oldest autoloader in the game, in such a different way. Now, don't get me wrong, the Amex 50B has always been fast and has always played this kind of gameplay where it wants to be mobile and then try and dump rounds at people at a decent distance. Oh dear, this is getting expensive. Come on, please. Oh lord, that was about 16 or 20,000 credits that I just completely whiffed trying to finish off a Type 4 Heavy here. Maybe I should have loaded the high explosive magazine. Honestly, with the HE changes, I could have probably done about 30 or 40 damage each shot. And it would have been a quarter of the cost and the vehicle would have been dead. But who knows, maybe those HE rounds will come in useful later on in this battle. Come on. Second magazine here at the Type 4 Heavy. Oh, that's a bit better. There we go. Right in. He angled his turret for me as well. And this is where the Amex 50B just feels absolutely voracious. It has really good DPM, 2,560. Um, obviously, because it can't use a gun rammer, you can't pump that up too much more, apart from using vents or a premium consumable on the tank. But just look at this acceleration. Does this truly look like a heavy tank? It doesn't. The way that it accelerates, the way that it goes backwards, the way that it can go up slope like that, this is not a heavy tank by any means. This is kind of a faster medium tank at this stage. Oh, that Moistian's trying to have a go at me. I have to admit, though, without the vertical stabilizers, that gun handling on the move when I was trying to lurch away from the Moistian, maybe if I'd been using vert stabs on this tank instead of that spool liner, then it would have been a, a better setup. But here's the thing: if you don't use the uh, if you don't use the spool liner on this vehicle, then you can't use the premium consumable. You can't use the premium fuel, and then you start to lose that 10% engine power. And remember, they all stack on top of each other. And there's almost no point of having that Bond Turbo on this tank unless you are using the premium fuel. And that's where heavy tanks are outrageous. 
because quite a few of them have a very good top speed. But unless you can improve the ground resistances with excellent crew skills, and unless you can pump up the engine power with a premium consumable, or I guess the regular consumable, which costs 5% uh, engine power, then you're never truly going to be able to get up to that top speed. And the vehicle just doesn't feel as if it's worth it. So I would honestly think that unless you are going to boost up the vehicle, that you probably should just go for a, a turbo without it. Or alternatively, you probably just shouldn't even go for the turbo at all on a tank like this. Maybe just try and do your vents, your coated optics, so you can spot for yourself at a decent distance. All right, so let's see what the AMX 50B is able to achieve here. So we're going to go in. Unfortunately for us, our first shot doesn't go in. We're going to put our second round in. Our third round enters the AMX uh, 13-105. And how about... How do we handle a situation here against an auto-loading light tank? Well, why don't we ram them? There we go. We shunt them up the slope for 380. They actually bounce off us there, or they hit our tracks trying to lock us in place. And the Gorilla manages to do a follow-up hit, keeping us in the game. That was not really a super fast, impactful ram. But to take no damage from the AMX 13105 and deal 380 to him, that's kind of like that we've got a five-round auto-loader now. With this build, I have been able to do some absolute staggering rams. Maybe I'll just try and put in a few highlights afterwards, if I can remember to do so. Um, no, I definitely will. I'll put in a few highlights of some of the rams this AMX 50B has been able to achieve. Okay, we're going to do one, two, three spins for Serb, and we're going to fire. <laughs> it shut down the E75. Look, I'm not usually one to put on a tinfoil hat, but maybe it's just for comedic value, right? Lock your reticle in place as to where the final shot was of the E75. Finally finish reloading. Spin the gun three times and then manage to shut them down. Now, I don't want to reload here because I was thinking I'll maybe get a few shots at the standard B while we were progressing. But now that we haven't managed to find them, I guess I want to just check over this ridge line before I'm going to commit to a reload. Now, the reload on this tank is not even that bad. It is 30 seconds. It's not the best, but it's, it's not as if it's... Um, it's life and death. And when you're this fast in a tank like this, I have been able to run away from quite a few medium tanks, let alone heavy tanks, to be able to, to reload. Okay, so now I'm in a, in a stage where I'm trying to communicate with the Griller on our team. The Griller says there's a WT in the middle. I say, Griller, I will spot for you, and I'm moving to the B6. The Griller presses affirmative, which suggests to me that the Griller is now going to back me up. I am going to get a, a bit of a run-up here. Like even, uh, even the fastest heavy tank in the game needs a bit of a run-up, boys and girls. Because once I go over that, uh, that ridge... Look at it like this. I thought that with this hit point disparity of the enemy team being ahead by 4,000, I needed to do something bold. So let's do something that usually a heavy tank would not be able to achieve. And that is completely blitz it in the open on Corellia against a whole tank destroyer gun line and the possibility of a medium tank and we're going along at 70 kilometers an hour. Now let's take a look at my speedometer in the bottom left hand corner and see how we're able to maintain that 70, 65, 60, down to 60, up, uphill now, 50, 45, 40. I think I let up off the accelerator a little bit there because I was thinking about preparing for a shot on the corner. Heavy tanks are not meant to be able to go up slopes like this. This is what happens when you have a Bond Turbo. This is what happens when you have the premium engine consumable. When you've got yourself brothers in arms, when you're also using the, the coffee and croissants on a vehicle like this to improve your driver cruise skill, which also affects your ground resistances and your ability to be able to slip up those slopes. And when you have new directives in the game that also increase your engine power furthermore. Now the game's actually starting to look a little closer now as my team managed to pull off a couple of kills, but at least we're still down by 3,000 hit points. So I'm hoping that the Skoda, the Super Conqueror, and the Badger can still manage to hold back that flank, but unfortunately for me, I managed to get spotted, which means that the STRV or maybe the WTF Panzer IV or possibly even a Badger is looking back at us. I say thank you to the Griller for coming and helping me, and also the Griller was a pretty big dude there because he waited on the edge of the cap circle so that we entered at the same time to be able to put some more pressure on our opponents. All right, so remember the hit point bar that we see at the top of the screen, and oh dear. Poor Mr. Gorilla gets caught out by the WT Alf Panzer IV. And yeah, he pays respects by pressing the F key in chat there. Poor Mr. Gorilla pings the map as to where he got shot from. Kind of useful information that the WT is just a little bit below me. 
I want to try and spot him. I don't want to try and get caught out right now. Okay, I am just leaving that situation. Why? Because I've got a 120 millimeter caliber gun. I can never be able to go into an STRV-103 hull unless I shoot the weak point. Wow, great result for me. The Skoda T-50 and the Super Conqueror spot the Super Conqueror is trying to flank me. And I'm hoping that I can get away from this full health STRV. And I'm just hoping that the WTF Panzer IV or the Badger have also been reduced on hit points. Whether they have or not remains to be seen. I'm really hoping that Badger is a little bit lower on hit points. The WT is also full health. We've got two full health tier 9 tank destroyers that we're going to have to deal with. I am just praying that the Badger is not full health as well. I'm asking for shots from the Skoda against the WTF Panzer IV. The Super Conqueror is approaching from the south eastern corner. Maybe he's going to be able to find the Badger who's trying to get a bit of a crossfire on me. And at this stage, oh, there's the Badger. Come on. Luckily, the Rock is covering me there. And the Super Conqueror shuts him down. Meaning that we are now in a three versus two situation. But we've only got two minutes left on this game. WTF Panzer IV above me on 1,600 damage. In theory, if I roll good, I'm going to be able to kill them in a single magazine. We put one shot into them, I think knocking out their engine. Then we put a second shot knocking out their tracks. And of course, they can't depress their gun. I'm waiting, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. Because I was worried that I would low roll and that I needed the Skoda to be able to help me out to get a shot. So I was waiting for the Skoda to be able to get into a position to be able to shoot the WTF Panzer IV. But luckily for me, I high rolled the shell so much that I decided to take a chance with the final shell because I only needed to do 314 damage. So good rolls there by me. Well done, Cracky Baby, on winning the uh, the one in two to be able to shut down the WT Alpha Panzer IV in a single magazine. And now we're up to five kills. And wow, what a heroic performance from the last three tanks and also the Griller on our team, the last four tanks. I've got five kills. The Super Conqueror's got four. Skoda's got three. That's making 12 between us. And we've got now a minute left on this game to be able to deal with this STRV-1030. So in this situation, I can tank a shot from him the vast majority of the time. So that's what I decided to do was just to get stuck in. We're going to track him, lock down his position, get to his side. We're going to retrack him again. And now we're going to do little shunts to be able to stop him from tracking. But oh god, what are you doing, Skoda? Don't push the STRV into me. Oh my lord. I nearly absolutely soiled myself at the end of the game there as the Skoda tried his hardest to turn an immobilized STRV-1030 into me. That could have been an absolute disaster. But wow, just how ludicrous, how quick the AMX 50B was here, how we're able to travel over so much of the map to be able to take the fight from angles that our opponents didn't expect, how we're able to pull back from positions that maybe slower heavy tanks would have been caught out in and engaged from sniper fire. And even with the lack of vertical stabilizers, the capacity for this tank to be able to engage in combat was not half bad. Anyway, I, I think I promised some of you a few rams. So firstly, I'm going to take my B-Wing and make a run down the uh, Death Star Trench here. And unfortunately for a little tier 8 medium tank on the enemy team, namely the Guard, they're going to find out what happens when the fastest heavy tank crunches into them at 60 kilometers an hour. That was 868 ramming damage. I think the thing that you've got to ask yourself here is that if you can ram something for 868 and only take 127 damage in return. Doesn't that make a vehicle that also has an autoloader even more deadly? One of the things that holds back autoloaders from being able to win those one-on-one -on -one engagements is being able to increase the damage of your magazine. Sometimes the 1,600 is not enough. Maybe you bounce a shot or maybe the tank has just got too many hit points. To have that extra from the ramming is outrageous. So here we join the AMX 50B in one of those really awkward scenarios where nobody wants to be the one to go around the corner to take a shot from a T-30 and an AE Phase 1. Well, enter AMX 50B, track the T-30 on the move, ram the T-30 for 749 and then still have two shots and enough to be able to finish off the AE Phase 1 afterwards. If you add up the damage that we dealt there, it was 2,113. Yeah, way and above the 1,600 damage that an AMX 50B would be limited to if it was only using its ammunition and not also its mass and velocity as a weapon. Of course, I did take over 500 damage from the T-30 when I rammed them. But what's going to do more to you 
a T30 shooting you for 750, or you trading 500 of your hit points to do 750 to them, and to be able to take them out more quickly. Let's take this slightly more prolonged fight as an example. We've used our speed to be able to race through the field, and now we have an STRV-103B. We track the vehicle, they use their repair kit, and then we shunt them for 657, meaning that we can follow it up with a shell that finishes them off with an extra little bit of help for our ally. We still have two shells remaining to be able to go after the TVP T51. However, we could have used a med kit here if we had one to be able to get rid of the stun, but I guess the subsequent stun from another artillery afterwards, if they even exist in the game, would have been diminished by the fact that we were using a super heavy spell liner. So that crunch engagement, we only took 77 damage from the STR V103B there, dealing 657 to them. You really are trading up 10 times the damage against those mid-weight vehicles. And of course, there's another STRV 103B that we're going to be able to go for. Unfortunately, I don't think the TVP quite understands just how fast and heavy the 50B is. And so we're able to get a nice little bit of a crunch ram there against the STRV. But unfortunately, the Fosh 155 finishes us off. And once again, we get another ram against the STRV 103B, dealing 572 to him. So our round on Corellia was an ace tanker for 1,412 experience, and we dealt 6,700 damage, so we should have the... What? No high caliber? Oh dear, that's because Limpopo on the enemy team in the badger actually dealt 7,500 commiserations to you for not taking down a game where you dealt that much damage. That's pretty outrageous. Although I have to admit, I lost credits this game because I did fire nearly 100,000 credits worth of ammunition at that Type 4 Heavy at long range. And so, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, that was the fastest possible heavy tank in World of Tanks. What did you think about its outrageous capacity, especially for ramming, right? If you enjoyed the video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. If you hated it, however, give it a thumbs down. And let me know what other tanks you would like to do a similar build with. And as always, thank you so much for watching. You've been epic and hopefully I'll see you soon.